I'm making an advanced system for controlling the AI in my games. Characters form independent plans at runtime without any guidance from me. This is all being done in the Godot engine using goal-oriented action planning, or Go, as a starting point and extending it to be much more flexible. I'm going to use this to make immersive games with an emphasis on simulation, so I'm focusing on the AI first and foremost. There are a few more features to add, but I'll be releasing this as a free Godot add-on when it's ready, so please consider subscribing if you're interested in future updates. I'd love it if anyone wants to test it out or contribute once a public GitHub is set up. I've implemented my own game AI a handful of times on smaller scales over the years. The typical starting point for making an enemy behavior is to use state machines that have a few distinct behaviors and define transitions between them. I use state machines for side-scrolling enemies to cycle between patrolling, chasing the player, and attacking. And I later implemented state machines again to control teammates and enemies in a helicopter version of Rocket League, switching between the attacker and defender states on the fly. Simple state machines start to break down when you're making more complex characters or trying to do anything immersive. To address this, the most popular approach is to use behavior trees. I think one of the first games to incorporate behavior trees was Halo, and the behavior trees allow the developers to make realistic feeling covenant squads that were challenging and lifelike. Behavior trees are also comprised of states but are organized into a tree structure to organize the control flow and make it easier to move between different states. Some helper nodes, like sequences and selectors, also make the control flow easier. When prototyping a restaurant management game earlier this year, I used behavior trees to drive the customer AI. Behavior trees in Godot are actually very well supported. I tested out both Behave and Limbo AI in my experiments, which each have great documentation and debug tools. So shout out to the maintainers of each. But I realized behavior trees were just not going to suit my purposes as a single developer. Just to make one predefined set of actions, that being the customer who needs to walk up to the counter, place their order, wait for their order to finish, receive their order, score it, and then finally walk out of the restaurant. I needed this complex of a tree structure, and I had to write a handful of custom leaf nodes specific to the customer. I couldn't see myself making a new tree from scratch every single time I wanted a different agent behavior, and I also couldn't see myself making anything truly complex when having to handcraft all of these interactions. Before we jump into the technical details, Let's take a look at the example environment I put together for testing my AI framework. <coughs> Have you ever wondered what happens to all the despawn loot in your favorite dungeon crawler? Body's still warm. Looks like there's a killer about it. Maybe it teleports into a mystical mail room where a team of goblins sorts items to refill the dungeon later. It's the Goblin Mail Room! Anyways. This is just a quick scene I put together for testing, so all the assets are temporary. Shout out to Mary and Ofer 1996 on Sketchfab for the goblin. And I used a mix up of different assets and textures from Blender Kit when making the scenery. Now let's start to talk about how the AI works and how these agents, these goblins are performing action planning. I'll start by overviewing goal oriented action planning pretty briefly. So assume we have an agent and like the name implies, our system's going to be relying on goals, actions, and the formation of a plan for this agent. So first, this agent has a list of goals available to it. At any given time, each of these goals may have their own levels of reward, and the most rewarding goal is going to be selected. The agent also has a set of actions available to it. Each one of these actions does something out in the world, uh, but is also reliant on a set of preconditions that need to be true before the action can be made, and the effects of the action need to be documented. For example, to eat food, a precondition needs to be that the agent has food, and the effect is going to be the agent's less hungry and the food disappears after it is eaten. So, given the goal that the agent has decided and the set of actions that it's able to make, it forms a plan recursively. So, given the goal that's been chosen, we know that the goal requires something to be true. Um, something needs to happen for the goal to be achieved. And we link together the relevant actions that can help us satisfy this goal. So if the goal requires X, action one may be able to satisfy X, but has its own precondition Y. 
Action two could be an action that satisfies Y, but has no requirements, has no preconditions. And so our sort of chain of conditions that need to happen finishes and our agent is done planning. We have a valid plan from action two to action one to satisfy our goal. From here, once the plan is made, the agent acts out the plan uh, by executing each of these sequentially. So we'll actually plan in reverse, but we execute the actions in the forward pass. So first we do action two. Given that action two is finished, now Y should be true. So we can now do action one. After action one, X is true. And so we've satisfied our goal that required X. If we look at this example, so say our goal is to increase the hunger stat. So the agent wants to improve its hunger by eating something. You could imagine a chain of actions being to find food, go and get the food, and then to eat the food, meaning that the food is now gone, but the agent's hunger has increased by some value. This is a simple example, and as you might imagine, you can actually do this in a bunch of different ways. It doesn't need to be goal-oriented goal action planning. So let's look at a behavior tree way to achieve this. So you can see that as we parse through the tree, we have the condition, is hungry? Is there food out in the world? And then if there is, we can move into a sequence to achieve this action. So we can go to the food, pick up the food, and then finally eat the food. This works perfectly fine and is actually a little bit more efficient because there's no planning going on. It's all created by the developer. But I have some gripes with behavior trees. It can be pretty annoying to deal with cases where there are multiple conditions that have to be satisfied because you, the developer, have to think of, OK, what if the agent is hungry, but there is not food? What if there is not food, but the agent is hungry, et cetera? And so there are a lot of edge cases that you have to deal with, um, especially when there's multiple conditions going on before you perform these actions. And then additionally, uh, we could very easily make certain actions generic, like going to food and picking up food could actually be go to anywhere and pick up any object. But in behavior trees, you're going to have a lot of duplicates of these simple sequences. So you can imagine for other situations, maybe instead of food, we're looking at picking up a weapon to attack something. We have to do the same sequence over and over. And so there's a lot of repeated uh, interactions that you, the designer, have to make sure to remember. If we instead look at this as the goal oriented action planning framework, um, you can see, say we have a large set of actions. These have no sort of relationship to each other. So I just threw in some additional actions like napping, attacking, etc., that could exist in the game world. And once we have the goal to increase hunger, um, the agent will form its own plan, which will chain together these actions. So we get the same functionality, basically. We go to the item, we pick it up, and we eat the food to increase hunger. But we didn't have to explicitly plan that relationship and that sequence between all of these. This would be done by having these actions uh, be chained together by matching together certain preconditions and their effects. So you can see the condition, the item exists, so we go to it. The agent is now nearby the item, so we can pick it up. The agent now has the item in their possession, so they can eat it. And then finally, the item is gone and the hunger increases. But if any of these conditions happen to already be true, say the agent was already holding something that it can eat, the plan can just start from there. We don't have to go through this whole planning sequence. Um, starting from the goal, we'll find the shortest, most efficient plan, which typically means we do less actions because the agent has it available to itself. I started out by implementing GOAT as originally documented and testing out my implementation with some custom actions and goals. You can see here the 2D scene I made where the monkey has goals related to hunger and when it gets too full, needing to poop. I used this sample code by Vinicius Jaravini on GitHub as an initial guide. He has a nice YouTube video going over his project that you can check out if interested. I don't think I mentioned it before, but in GOP, the preconditions and effects, which are used for planning actions, are written in relation to a world state. The world state is an abstracted representation of the world or the game environment, or it can represent what the agent knows about the world. So during planning, actions are able to simulate changes to this world state to see if the goal would be achieved through a certain sequence. An issue with original GOP is that the world state needs to be very simple, and the world needs to be boiled down essentially to a set of simple conditionals. For example, even though hunger is a continuous value, I was encoding it into an is hungry boolean to be able to chain actions together. But what if an agent is so hungry that a single piece of food doesn't move them into the not hungry state? 
they'd need to plan a long chain with multiple eating food actions, even though the first banana or whatever they eat is helping to achieve their goal at a conceptual level. I made note of this limitation and some other pain points I experienced and got to work extending GOPE to create a more flexible framework. I shifted over to testing in 3D as well, since that's what I'm more familiar with, and I'd be able to hook my actions into the 3D systems I already had, like picking up or dropping objects, or agent locomotion using Godot's navigation regions. The first major change I made was to adjust my world state from containing simple key value pairs to now supporting object information. In GOPE, it would be a challenge to monitor something like proximity to an object, needing to include a conditional is agent close to banana, and changing this during an action's effect rather than directly moving the player. This is because we're in the planning phase, not actually doing the action, so the player and banana can't move. GOP uses these proxy conditionals, like is agent close to banana, to get around this. I adjusted the ways in which the world state is simulated to where objects can maintain their own state, and these states can be duplicated during planning without duplicating of the actual object. To help with this, I also split up the world state into agent-specific attributes and world attributes. At one point during implementation, I caused massive memory leaks. Uh, I found out it was because Godot will not automatically free nodes that you duplicate, even if they lose all references and aren't ever added to the tree. But after freeing these, when the simulated world states were destroyed, I got it all working well. Using this system for object-oriented world states, I then overhauled how preconditions are evaluated. In GOPE, the system simply checks if a key has a wanted value inside the world state, and in effect would change one or more values in the duplicated world state. I made it such that preconditions could be evaluated as lambda functions, checking over custom conditionals for the simulated versions of the agent and the world states. With this, the logic isn't constrained to what's in the world state, and we can now check on Godot-specific information or even on other user-written systems when we're designing our goals and actions. As an example, my navigation condition is using Godot's navigation agents during planning, and it will fail if their own system would be unable to find a way to the object. This allows for the chaining together of some pretty advanced logic already, even with very few actions. In my goblin example, the primary goal is just that the tunnel is holding an object within the group sword or potion. After making a separate goal for each of the tunnels, we automatically have all the goblins sorting the items. With a behavior tree, the same functionality would take me, the developer, hours of planning and implementation. This did take me a lot of hours, probably a lot more hours, but it's a system and a framework, so next time it'll be quick. Until something breaks, probably. <laughs> I made a lot more minor improvements, but this video is getting pretty long and I'm incredibly slow at editing, so I won't go into depth. But one thing of note was to subclass the base action with what I'm calling spatial actions. Jeff Orkin, who introduced GOPE for gaming, has talked briefly about some of its challenges, and a major one is combating complexity. For actions almost certain to go after each other, for example, readying a weapon before shooting, or in my case, going to an object before interacting with it, it can be more optimal to combine the actions into one. So, I made it such that any action needing an agent to be nearby an object has a spatial action base class that it can extend off of. I'm planning to keep refining this system, some major to-dos being to multi-thread the planning process and to create some kind of visual de debugger. Debugging texturally was not easy, and it was definitely my biggest time waster. I'm also working on refactoring this into a Godot add-on to hopefully get this in the hands of others, and to see if there are improvements or feedback to be made. If you stuck around this far, thanks so much for watching my video. Uh, feel free to leave in the comments any feedback you have, any suggestions, or just if you like the video. See you next time.